RP Thor here. I want to talk about today some fun, fun stuff. Super entertaining in this space. I watch some podcasts or I listen to them. My friends Myron do it really well. Uh, my friend uh, Jonathan MLD does it really well too. He was on with uh, Brian Atlas as whatever. And uh, that's blown up too. Boy, I'll tell you what, out here in California, you have a whole different um, kind of uh, mentality amongst young women out here because the system, I mean, the system that you guys are all living through with wokeness has really, really deep roots here in California. So thank you very much, Californians, for some of these sweet little gals that uh, really are feisty and uh, really don't like men. You're welcome very much. They're just revealing the reality that most women don't like most men. And they have ideals on what men should be. And they think all men should be like. And it gets us to this conversation. Body count. How many men is too many to be with? Sexually. Before it's too late. Oh my God. Imprinting has been done. The damage is done. There is no hope for the future. So move on to the next. Well, there is a certain logic behind that. From a man's perspective, that logic right there is pretty much the base default thinking when wanting to have a long-term marriage or, or a long-term relationship and children. You gotta ensure parentage, you gotta ensure loyalty that she will carry your line forward. Uh, it, and you need to do your part, of course, too. But that's really one of the basis for screening a mate is how loyal will she be to your children? And by that, I mean, is she going to abandon you after the first sign of trouble and select another mate? Uh, and Or is she going to leave you cucked and not even have children with you, but have you provide the resources for genetic offspring that aren't even your own? This is probably the biggest extent, you know, existential fear at a sexual level that men would have and and there's some jealousies tied to it that are biological in nature and if they run wild people have been killed for it so that's a big deal when it comes to the firmware that men come with uh, when it comes to the women they view it completely differently they really have been conditioned in the last oh, 50 to 70 years this thought that men and women women view sex and mating and relationships in the same fashion, which we absolutely do not. Our, our, our method and styles of love are very different. They're very complementary. Uh, while a man can completely dissociate his emotions from sex, there's biologic reasons for this. His primary root drive is unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. He produces millions and billions of sperm. And sperm is cheap, eggs are expensive. Every opportunity is an opportunity to move the genetic line forward. And the nature of the universe will drive him with these unannounced signals and indicators to push him forward to do so. And part of that is being able to disassociate any emotions uh, or, or be able to dissociate emotions from the actual act. Now, a woman has an investment with this egg because she's going to carry it to term. And so, in order to screen a mate, emotions are a big part of that. You know, emotions generate from the mammalian brain and the limbic system. And it's an important factor in being able to screen for mates. Keep in mind, all of this can be bypassed in, at any time. We have some level of free will, but this underlying firmware is always present. And if you're able to acknowledge it, you can bypass it much easier. But you should be able to acknowledge that these are our primary drives. Women select differently. They have to select the best genetic option. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff written out there. Sexy sons theory, you know, evolutionary psychology. There's reasons to select. There's the dualistic mating drives. 
which is, you know, you need to have the provider and the security, but then you want the most aggressive, strongest, and successful at surviving male that expresses a dominance hierarchy over other males because your children will receive protection from that, not only genetically, but possibly physically as well. So there's that too. It, it, she doesn't escape this. This is there all the time. And so she's much more selective. However, as it stands, she's very selective with her sexual encounters and yet men are always available. She has options available to have sex at any moment, anytime she wants to. And this is to turn into quite a quandary for a lot of folks it's with this body count thing. You know, how much is too much? Because every time a woman does have sex, there is that potential for an extreme emotional connection, particularly if the sex was good, orgasms are involved. That creates chemistry, pheromones, and a lot of other bodily functions that aren't immediately recognized, but start an, imp uh, an imprinting process for the betterment of the offspring. That's fact. Now, whether she ignores it or not, so what? Um, this is why men select for lower body counts. They're going to have the ability to mirror easily. They're going to have the ability to bond. And so men know this on an instinctual level, and they would like that's not so much I don't even, it seems to me it's not even about oppression. It's just about mate selection to have a successful family. So Thor, how much is too much? Well, shit, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen a lot of folks that have a lot of bodies that do just fine. Uh, but it's kind of kind of contextual how that ha has gone about. Over time, it seems to not have as large of an impact as a young person, the impact seems to be very huge. So I don't think that the science is all in, but what's out there is enough of an indication that if you're a young woman, you do, if you do want to be a mother and you want to be a wife, more power to you, your best option to get the absolute best selection in a mate and also get provisioning and get that alpha uh, tingly guy that can hit both buttons at once is to at least have your body count seem rather low. Um, if you're on TikTok boasting that you have 35 bodies at age 18, well, there's some issues possibly. What is the issue? Well, number one, you're not very loyal. You're kind of just open to any casual encounter. And if you have that in your past, why wouldn't you have it in your future? Sex is fun. That's how guys look at it. And they're going to be have to have a lot of fun with you. But it does limit your selections in the future. Even with that really sexy hot guy, he's probably not going to want to put a ring on it. That would be really unlikely. So my advice to the young gals is, is going to be, here's the thing. If nine lives is good enough for cats, I think it's good enough for the gals. And that's about all I have to say about body count. Someone my age, it really doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Except it's super entertaining to watch everybody uh, kind of get their feathers in a ruffle about it. <laughs> it's quite entertaining. So that's all I got to say about it. Skull, you guys. See you on the other side.